down in an old diary of my father's, in spaces left blank after he had scribbled his daily accounts. Until we read that account, my siblings and I had struggled to somehow come to terms with the many anxieties and nightmares that had disturbed our childhood nights. Her autobiography helped to resolve the fears by bringing them out in the open and dealing with them forthrightly. When she came of age, Tutabai was still unmarried, and the family, after desperate attempts at concealing the shameful fact from relatives and neighbors, and pretending from month to month that everything was just normal, ultimately found a boy from the Gokan family. She was married, a son was born to her, Bharachandra, and within a couple of years, her husband died of anemia and malaria. Her parents-in-law did not bother to visit her. Except for the jewelry given to me by my father, she writes, I did not possess a penny. There was a life insurance policy, but that too lapsed, and no one had bothered, as no one had bothered to pay the installments. Thus started her peregrination to the sun on her waist, and no future to look forward to. All this was, and continues to be, the common fate of widows from the more deprived sections of the middle class in India. Fortunately, by 1920s, the Chitrapur Sarasut Brahmin community to which I belong had abandoned the custom of shaving their widows. So Kutabai's long hair, and which when loosened, tumbled down to her knees, was spared the barber's scissors. Even in this desperate situation, Kutabai was determined to educate herself, to educate, to achieve something of significance in her life, if possible, become a doctor. Gadag was in the backwoods of the Bombay state, that's where she lived, but Pune and Bombay were across the border, no more than a day's journey away by train. But no one in her family had either the inclination or the time to accompany her across the border to these cities and get her admitted into an educational institute. The one person who came to her help at this moment was Sashitar Mangesh Rao, her elder sister's husband, who was a Mamletba, you know, that was an official, a revenue official in the government of service. First in Haveri, then in Dharwar. His house was like a huge orphanage in which, apart from his own seven children, he and his wife had collected together and provided shelter for several orphan people, often only distantly related. Mangesh Rao was obsessed with getting this entire group properly educated. A teacher would arrive early in the morning to provide tuition in Sanskrit. Then again, even as the children reached home from school in the evening, another teacher would present himself at the doorsteps. Besides, Mangesh Rao himself was a keen and enthusiastic teacher. My mother writes, I sat down to study with the children. Since I love 